gentlemen, we have had the occasion of listening to many speakers talk about the value of education. And I have no doubt in my mind that nobody can debate against the value of education. It is not lost on me that the theme of this particular prize-giving come education day is education for the global arena. You know, Honorable Kogo, we are gathered here today and there are many who may think that this is a small event. But as the wise people say, can the ocean exist in spite of the river? Can the forest exist in spite of the tree? And can the river exist in spite of the little droplets? The truth is that our little efforts is what contributes to the big things that we do. I am moved through the testimonies of those who have spoken before me that in this sub-county you are the only one who has seen the wisdom for the third time to organize an event such as this. In other places, when I said things such as I've said about you, and my audience carried their hand, they would have clapped for you. But it appears to me that this audience has not. You are to be praised. I'm also happy that you have succeeded in putting together all the sectors of education in this part. I've had the advantage of listening to professors of universities. I've had the advantage of listening to the trade union leaders representing different cadres of teachers in the country and in the region. I've had the advantage of listening to the local politicians. I've had the advantage of listening to my good friend is the governor of Nandi, and I've heard the praises and the songs and dances that have been performed by our young men and women who have performed here to demonstrate to us that education is not only the academic aspect of it, but all other aspects which are now being given their pride of place in the new curriculum. We are praising you and those who have worked with you and we want to encourage you because this is the generation that will ensure that our country realizes our potential. You know, when I read history, and many of us will remember that history, it was said that on the eve of independence, we had identified three enemies. That we had identified poverty, we had identified disease and we had identified ignorance. We therefore throughout the over 50 years of independence that we regained in 1963, given pride of place to education as the key that will open to us and for us the doors of prosperity. And what we are doing here and what we are reminding our young men and women who are assembled here today is that education is the only thing that equalizes many men and women. If we were to ask those who are assembled here, whether they are professors, whether they are doctors, whether they are lawyers, whether they are teachers, whether they are accountants, whether they are business people, whether they are politicians, they will tell you the single thing that equalizes people is education. Education is the equalizer because it is still true that the mind is the standard of a human being. No matter how tall you are, if your mind does not work well, you are just a tall fool. No matter how short you are, if your mind does not work well, you are just a short fool. But if you have a mind, no matter how tall and no matter how you look like, 
we will recognize that there goes a man and a woman whose mind speaks for itself. And that is why we are celebrating the men and women who have organized this event. And that is why we are encouraging our young men and women that if you are to be celebrated 10 years from today, the only thing that you must focus on is education. But you know, there is the tendency of thinking that you, if you are a village champion, you are a champion. No. A village champion is not a champion. He's only a champion in his village. It is the great Tanzanian musician Baraka Mwinshehe Mwaruka who sang Jogo Washamba Hawiki Mjini. And I'm telling you and reminding you that if you are good in Kapsabet, you are only as good as you are good in Kenya. And that is why every time I celebrate Kapsabet High School, because you are not only good here, you are good nationally. And when you are good nationally, it means you are good in the East African region. And when you are good in the East African region, you are good in Africa. And when you are good in Africa, you can now compete with the world because that is where the competition is. You know, Grace, who is a CEC and whom I have met today, as we were listening to the performances that we were enjoying, we shared, and she told me that she was once a teacher, a high school teacher. She is now a CEC at the level of policy formulation. The beauty of education is that it opens many doors for you. You can choose to be a teacher, and when you are tired of teaching, and you are sitting at home, some governor, including my good friend Sang, will identify you and make you a CEC. That is what happens. But if you did not go to school, we will never find you because you'll be hidden in some village doing next to nothing, which is not good for you and for anybody. We are therefore encouraging you to use the occasion that you have to ensure that you prepare yourself for tomorrow. The professors who are here will tell you, and I'll name them by name, Professor Angala, was sitting comfortably in his rural home and sometimes in Mombasa. Then because he went to school, the president of the Republic of Kenya and other institutions saw the wisdom of choosing a wise man and behold, he's the chair of Koitalel. If he was a beach boy in Mombasa, he would be walking half naked, being useful to nobody except himself. But today we are celebrating him because of education. Professor Mayo, who is sitting here at Baraton University, the reason why he was selected is because there is something in his mind the directors of education that you listen to here, they are men and women that we are celebrating because there is something between their ears. And when there is something between your ears, you don't have to tell us. You open your mouth and we know that there is something useful between your ears. <laughs> Today, therefore, we come here not to make many lengthy speeches, we come here to remind ourselves and to remind the young men and women that there is a future, that the world is looking for new young men. And what are the young, the new young men that the world is looking for? The world is looking for new young men who are disciplined. 
Because discipline is at the heart of who you are. No matter how educated you are, no matter how rich you are, if you do not have the gift of discipline, then you are a danger to society. Today, I am asking you, young men and women, be disciplined that you may be a good global citizen. The world is looking for young men, young men who are humble. Humility is the mother's milk of greatness. If you see any man or any woman who, because they have gone to school or because they have wealth, are arrogant and shun humility, they are a danger to themselves and danger to society. Today I'm encouraging you young men who are here, embrace the gift of humility. The world is looking for young men and women who believe in integrity. No matter how clever you are, no matter how rich you are, if you have no integrity, then you have no value to your society. Today we come here to celebrate you because we hold the view that education is going to give you the integrity that you need in order to survive in the world. The world is looking for young men and women who are respectful because respect is reciprocal and is earned. You know, many of you who are in positions of authority and have applied for jobs and opportunities sometimes when you ask for a job elsewhere, they ask you to get a letter from your high school, a letter from your primary school. That is when we discover that you are expelled in every school that you visited. And even if people wanted to employ you, they think this is trouble personified. <laughs> what we are encouraging you, young men and women, is that you must have a good school living certificate from your primary school. You must have a good living certificate from your high school. You must do things that are right so that 10 years down the line, when you look at your own living certificate, it is said of you, he was a hard-working young man. He was a hard-working young, young woman who did not entertain nonsense. But whenever there was an opportunity to disagree with the teachers, he told the teachers not in a manner that inflamed their anger, but with the firmness and the humility that opened their eyes. I believe that that is a possibility, and I have no doubt in my mind that on an occasion such as this, we are celebrating and preparing you for that day. That is the man, that is the woman that education should prepare. As I conclude, because conclude I must, we must therefore ask ourselves, are we prepared for the future? Today, when you walk around the world, you discover that competition is very stiff. When you walk across Africa, you discover that there are many opportunities. Today, when you walk in Kenya, you discover that there are many opportunities. But those opportunities are only there for those who are prepared and those who have been prepared, and those who have the ability. We live in a country and in a world where everybody thinks that when they have graduated, they must be employed. The world is now looking for young men and women who can innovate, young men and women who can invent. The world is looking for inventors and innovators who themselves are going to be job creators. And that is what we are encouraging you to do. 
my understanding of the competency-based curriculum, which I'm still learning many things about, is that whichever talent you have, nurture that talent. The governor and I, and the member of parliament and I, while we were listening to the young man who was rapping, were amusing to ourselves that in today's world, that young rapper can employ 10 professors because when he does one performance, he's possibly play, paid 1 million shillings. There is money in your talent. If you are to be a good musician, be a good one who is celebrated across Africa. If you are to be a good runner, be a good runner like your kinsman, Eliud Kipchoge. I'm quite certain that if Eliud Kipchoge were to come here, he could very easily, and I wish he was here, he could very easily give each one on, of us on the dance about a million bob. And, <laughs> His, his account would not even be disturbed. And the only thing that he has perfected is that he is disciplined. He just doesn't wake up one morning and say, I'm going to run. There is preparation for whatever you do, at whatever level. If you ask the, uh, the men who are sitting here, who are professors, they don't sleep. They are writing on a daily basis. So young men and women, miambiwa mengi, Tumesema mengi kama chiriku alie kunu wa maji ya choni banangala. Lakini nikimalizia nitasisitiza hivi. Siri ya kujiendeleza kibinafs ni lazima uwe na nidhamu. Lazima uwe ni mtu wa kujinyima. Kwa kuwa waswahili wanasema mchumia juani, hulia kivulini, mkiwa shuleni, mnachumia juani. Wakati wakulia kivulini, na wakati wakusifiwa, na wakati wakushabikiwa, na wakati wakusherekewa, itakuja. Ndiyo maana unaona hawa wenzetu hapa tunawaenzi tunawasherehekea bwana kogo akisimama makofi tunazompa ni tofauti na za makofi za kawaida kwa kuwa ni daktari na mbunge alichumia juani sasa anakulia wapi bwana sang alijinyima Amechumia juani sasa anakulia kivulini siku muona akiingia bwana sang lakini akitembea katika mabarabara ya nandi anatembea kwa kwa vingora kuna magari ambayo yanamtangulia kuna maaskari ambao ambao wanampa salute kwa nini kwa kuwa alichumia juani sasa anakulia kivulini profesa Misoi, ukienda ofisini kwake, utapata ofisini kwake, li, li, siku ingia tebado sija ingia ofisini kwake, lakini katika sebule lake, sebule tu, ya kuwakaribisha wageni, nilipo ingia tu pale, ndizi na mamri, alichumia juani sasa na kulia kivulini. Ilimradi ukichumia juani unakulia kivulini. Na ndio tunawahamasisheni ya kwamba siku hizo zaja na zitakuja kwa juhudi na juhudi hizo lazima mzifanye nyinyi wenyewe. Waalimu tayari wanafanya juhudi, wao wanakuja darasani wakija darasani kila mwisho wa mwezi fedha zao zinaingia katika kaunti zao walichumia juani wanakulia wapi kivulini kuna makasis kuna maaskofu hapa katika kanisa mbalimbali msifikirie kwamba tu walionekaniwa na bwana lasha 
Bwana aliwaonekania lakini pia walienda shuleni ndio bwana bwana sikuizi anaonekania wale ambao wameenda shuleni Hii mambo ya kwenda kama Paulo uzia ukienda Damaski kisha atajitokeza ghafla bin huu siku hizo alikatiza mtindo huo mtindo wa sasa ni ya kwamba lazima uende shuleni ukisha panuka katika akili ndio bwana atakuonekania sivyo makasisi kwa hivyo ndugu zanguni asanteni sana ninasisitiza ya kwamba nina hakika ya kwamba hatua ambazo zimechukuliwa na wazazi na walimu na wahusika wote wadau wote ni hatua ambazo zinastahili kushabikiwa na ni ukweli usiopingika ni ukweli usiopingika ya kwamba kizuri cha jiuza chema cha jitembeza na ni ukweli usiopingika ya kwamba chanda chema uvikwa pete daktari ndugu kogo wewe ni chanda chema tunakuvika pete wanafunzi ambao walipasi katika mtihani nyinyi ni vyanda vyema tunawavika pete walimu ambao mlishiriki katika kuandaa na kunoa vijana hawa nyinyi ni chanda chema mnastahili kuvikwa pete wazazi ambao mlijinyima ili kulipa karo nyinyi ni chanda chema mnastahili kuvikwa pete na mwisho kabisa tukumbuke ya kwamba siri ya maendeleo ni vijana wenye malezi bora si hanjema na bongo kali vijana hawa nina hakika nikitumia mfano wa Capsabet wana si hanjema malezi bora na bongo kali Mungu awajalie leo na siku zote za usoni na nyote ambao mnapendana kongole siku hii ya wapenda nao Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.